Hello and welcome to the IU NewsNet Daily. I'm Jack Bassett. And because our entire news team is reporting from across the world right now, reporting from their homes, I'm coming to you from my home, right here in Auburn, Indiana, reporting from my hallway. For our newscast, we'll be keeping you updated with all the latest coronavirus news, as well as what's happening back in Bloomington. Now first, an update. After a virtual meeting on Friday, the IU Board of Trustees approved a $1 billion line of credit to the university in case of a possible budget deficit due to complications with the coronavirus. IU spokesperson Chuck Carney says that this money should help make up for a shortfall of income since all summer events have been canceled. Although using this money isn't their plan, Carney says that it would allow for IU to have enough credit to cover everything if it came down to it. The credit will be used as a reserve until the university knows how COVID-19 will affect the financial health of IU. If you have some unused iBucks, you might just be getting some real bucks, or at least some credit back in return. IU's website states that all remaining iBucks will roll over and remain valid throughout the end of next year. IU will also add additional iBucks to returning students' plans, worth 5% of the existing balance. Seniors or students not returning to campus in 2021 will be able to file a petition to receive credit for their remaining iBox. For the last month, the coronavirus has taken over life as we know it across the United States. Millions of Americans are taking extra precautions to ensure the safety and well-being of both themselves and the people around them. IU News Nest Riley Kine tells us why some IU students are at a higher risk than others. The coronavirus pandemic is frightening for all, but for some, like those in a high-risk category, it can be even more terrifying. IU senior Caroline Storms was diagnosed with diabetes her junior year of college. She now has a weakened immune system, which puts her at a much higher risk if she were to contract the virus. It's definitely more intimidating just because if I get sick, staying at home and recovering is less of an option. Um, It's definitely a higher possibility that I end up in the hospital Um, And just because of having diabetes, my immune system is a little different than everyone else's. So not only am I at higher risk to get it, but I'm also at high risk of being put on a ventilator and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely more nerve wracking, especially when traveling or doing daily things like going to the grocery store. Being diabetic, it is harder for her to control her blood sugar, especially when she is sick. When I get sick, my levels go way up, which puts me at risk for DK or diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, And that actually puts you in the hospital and can put you into a coma and can lead to death. But I can't always control that when I'm sick, especially if you're not eating as much, not hydrating as much. When it comes to being high risk, getting sick can make someone's underlying health issues much worse. Most people that have other health conditions come into the hospital to get treated because you need to still treat their current condition and make sure that they're both getting taken care of equally. Caroline has had to take more extreme precautions over the last few weeks and will continue to, along with millions of other people, as the world battles the coronavirus. Thanks, Riley. Now, construction in and around campus is not taking a break during the COVID-19 crisis. In fact, some projects are off to an even earlier start. That includes construction projects on Kirkwood near the heart of campus. Normally, that area would be filled with people and cars. The various projects underway around Bloomington will improve roads, add bike lanes, and ease traffic congestion. The I-69 project on State Road 37 between Indianapolis and Bloomington is also continuing now that traffic is way down. Although the university is postponing all graduation ceremonies, a famous IU alumni wants to see a massive celebration for the class of 2020. Billionaire Mark Cuban is working with Live Nation to plan concerts at college campuses across the country, including IU. Here's what he had to say in a recent Hoosier Hysterics podcast. Let's pick a day when we're on the other side of this, where on every major college campus, there's a different huge band led by doing this from IU. And I went back to Live Nation like, we love this idea. You can hear Mark Cuban's full interview at 247sports.com. And now, the coronavirus continues to change the way we all live our lives, but it's also changing the way we say goodbye to it. IU Newsnet takes a deep dive into how people are saying goodbye to the ones they love most during this difficult time. Losing a loved one is never easy, especially when that someone is your dad, and you aren't able to be there with him for his final moments. The whole situation was difficult because you know, we weren't able to get as much information as we wanted to. Um, we weren't able to go and see him. And, you know, nobody deserves to die alone. 
our very own Mary Kate Hamilton lost her father, Andrew Hamilton, on March 23rd. And due to the coronavirus, her goodbye looked a lot different. So the doctor actually called us on his own personal iPhone so that we would be able to FaceTime our dad, um, tell him that we loved him, say our goodbyes. Um, and then we hung up and they pulled the plug and they said that, you know, they held his hand while he was um, passing. And of course, that's something that we would have wanted to do. Hospitals around the country are restricting people from entering their buildings to prevent the spread of COVID-19, even in the moments before a loved one's death. For the Hamilton family, the restrictions continued with the funeral. We have decided here at our funeral home um, to stick with the CDC recommendations of 10 people or less at a funeral service. Alex Pennington of Pennington Funeral and Cremation Services in Auburn, Indiana, understands that social distancing is needed during this crisis, but creates hardships for families experiencing loss. The coronavirus has stripped the ability for people to grieve the loss of their loved one. Limited to 10 people in attendance at her father's service, Mary Kate knows firsthand the difficulty was saying goodbye during the circumstances of COVID-19. I think that funerals are important for closure and we haven't still been able to get that official closure. We here at IU News Net want to send our deepest condolences out to Mary Kate and her entire family during this difficult time. But the sad truth is that she's not alone. As families across the country and across the world are all experiencing difficulties saying goodbye to the ones they love most. And the only advice they are given? To wait. Now we have tentative plans to have kind of a celebration of life ceremony once all of this blows over, but it's difficult because we don't know when that will be. Not knowing, waiting, and being patient is all the Hamilton family and families across the globe can do before saying their final goodbyes to the ones they love most. I want to thank Mary Kate Hamilton for sharing with me her difficult story and experience. Mary Kate also shared with me that her father did in fact pass away due to COVID-19 complications. Alex Pennington of Pennington Funeral and Cremation Services says the best thing you can do during this difficult time is to pick up the phone and contact a loved one to see how they are feeling, living, and grieving during these difficult times. And now an IU senior is back on the small screen after winning it big last week in Jeopardy's college championship. Tyler Combs says that he has dreamed of this moment since he was a young boy, and it finally became a reality. Last Monday, he made his Jeopardy! debut with two other competitors from other schools and made his mark. He won the first round of the quarterfinals with over $28,000 in winnings. And now he is one of nine semifinalists left in the championship, and will take the stage again tonight at 7.30pm on NBC to compete. And with Indiana's stay-at-home order is still in effect, Celebrating Easter looked a bit different this year. Churches remain closed, but families adapted by attending virtual church services. Some churches even offer drive through communion, confession, and blessings. Families not able to reunite in person took to Zoom to celebrate digitally. Regardless of how people celebrated, it's safe to say that this has been an Easter unlike any other. And that's all for the IU Newsnet Daily. We'll be back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A special thank you to our entire team who are filming from their cell phones and editing and producing from their homes. Thank you all for watching. I'm Jack Bassett. Stay healthy and stay safe.